Let's talk about when the Proud family discuss fat phobia and fat shaming. All right, big boy, didn't you read the sign? Hey, Carlos, I know a place where you could fit in. The food court. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another Proud Family video, but this is not a character analysis per se. It's an episode analysis. This episode analysis, I wanna talk about the fat shaming, fat phobic episode called Forbidden Date. Now I know my last few videos breaking down characters and certain scenes and scenarios and episodes, a lot of y'all might think I actually hate the show, but like I said, I grew up watching The Proud Family it was one of my favorite shows, but as an adult, when you watch back certain episodes, especially from the original series, you see different things from an adult like perspective in a different light. And it makes you wonder, like, wow, at that time, these are the ideas that a lot of people had. They just wrote it through animation. And although we can be critical of the show and the writing issues, there's some episodes that I actually enjoyed that when I go back and watch it, I still have a liking for how the episode was written and handled. Now, it wouldn't be the Proud Family without perpetuating those certain stereotypes, in this case, about fat people, right? But overall, I feel like this is one of the episodes back then that they actually handled kind of well. Before we get into the episode, there's a difference between fat phobia and fat shaming. They go hand in hand, but... The difference is with fat shaming is when you actually assaulting somebody verbally, the words, you know, comment sections, different things like that. Like you're telling somebody, teasing somebody, bullying in a verbal, physical sense, right? Now, fat phobia is a mindset where it might not be verbal, you might not say it out loud, it's indirect ways of acting towards fat people. In this episode, I feel like both are highlighted well. The girls all go to an amusement park. Penny, of course, is stuck babysitting. The parentification of Penny. That video is coming soon. Well, wait a minute, young lady. I need you here to watch the twins. But my girls will be back at 10. Have fun. Remember, no boys. And they spot this group of guys, which La Cienega says is the football team, right? Get ready for kickoff, ladies. Football team at 12 o'clock. There are different range of guys, but one, Carlos, as we know his name to be, is obviously taller and bigger than the rest of them. Check out Gordito. <laughs> Girl, I thought he was one of the rats. After they see this, they all scramble to see who's going to get which guy except Carlos. Nobody wants him because he's fat. He's not my date. He's not mine either. He's not my date. Don't need him. That's okay. That's a part of fat phobia. Not even wanting to approach him, talk to him, just because. You don't want to be stuck with the fat guy. Oh my God. But of course, with La Cienega's conniving ways, she ends up getting stuck with Carlos for the day. La Cienega said you like big guys, so we decided to switch. And almost instantly, you get the fat jokes and the fat shaming, where it's like, oh, I'm stuck with the fat guy. He can't even fit into the roller coaster. The lowest is what? Zero. But of course, following this, the writers perpetuate the stereotype with Carlos saying, oh, I'm hungry anyway. Do we go to the food court? I'm hungry. And with this, you see Penny's whole energy just whimper down and she has this all of like, oh, I'm stuck with this fat guy for the rest of the day. The, my friends got the other cool guys. They're probably having fun. I'm stuck with this guy that's always hungry. And, you know, she tries to stand up for him, tries to get him to stand up for himself. But once again, the writers have him perpetuate the, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Breaking carousel rides. And they even have Penny have a fat phobic dream sequence where she imagines them getting on a certain ride, you know, the double shot rides, the rides where they go all the way up and when they drop, it's like a, it's that rush. But this happens. Yeah. 
after being with him for most of the day, having all these thoughts and feelings, she finally reaches her breaking point and Penny blows up on him. But right when she's about to really go off on him, she realizes that BB and CC are stuck at the top of a roller coaster. This horse is tired. And so are you. And I came here to have fun. Ah! Most likely the same one they were forbidden for getting on because he was so big. Carlos, who Penny had no hope for, she felt like he was just useless, hopeless. She had pity for him. She really had no romantic interest in him at this point. Carlos jumps into action, saving them, showing he has heart, he has courage, he has a spirit within himself to be like, okay, I'm a bigger guy, but I can still do this. I can still save BB and CC. Don't worry, Penny. I'll save them. From my perspective, I can't say how it is to be viewed as a bigger person in the world, having people tease you for being bigger. I have my things of where, you know, you gain weight and people make comment on it like, oh, you're getting big. Oh, or when you lose weight, a lot of people say, oh, you lost weight. Oh, you look good now. It's like, hmm, how did I look before? But with Carlos, you can tell that in this episode, he jumped straight into action. Because when you think about it, all the fat shaming from La Cienega and all the fat filming moments he faced throughout that day, he could have easily been like, oh, I'm sorry, Penny. I'm too big to get on a roller coaster. I, I can't do nothing. Uh, but he still went on his way, risked his own life, his own safety, just to save her brother and sister. And mind you, he didn't know Penny from a hole in the wall. This was his first time meeting her. That just goes to show how much heart, how much character, how much morals he had. How much courage he had to do that anyway. I know I can fit in those seats. It took this for Penny to realize, oh wow, he's actually a cool guy. He's just bigger physically. But that doesn't stop him from being a fun person, a funny person. He won her like teddy bears and you know, they still had a good time with each other. For you, Penny. Thank you, Carlos. And for contrast, they show that La Cienega, Dijonay, and Zoe ended up having the worst time with their dates and getting wet and dumped within a heartbeat by those guys that they thought were more physically attractive, more fit. They instantly rejected them without hesitation. Better be getting us some towels. Do you mean those boys over there with those other girls? La Cienega, being the brat that she is, still couldn't let Penny relish in her moment of wow i'm the one that had the best time here she still had the fat shame give her little fat jokes he even won this teddy bear for me a pie eating contest you know bbcc handled that <laughs> <laughs> even in that situation of them getting soaked and dumped right afterwards for other girls by those guys that they thought were more physically attractive dijanae was just like okay well you got stuck with the fat guy so you had it just as bad as us. Pity was like, you know, we had a good time. Yep, I guess we all had a bad time. No, Carlos and I had a great time. In a resolve to that episode and that whole plot, Penny wanted to get to know him even more. He even came over to the house. And as the episode ends, of course, they had to end with a fat joke. You didn't think you could have a good time with me, did you? No, I didn't. But you know what? I'm glad I did. That big guy? Yeah, he's a good person. And that's what's important, not how cute a guy is. Slim over there is eating me out of house and home. Go study at his house. Now get and bring some of that food he got at his house over here. But you can tell Penny learned not to be so shallow based on someone's physical appearance, based on someone being fat, and instantly thinking, oh, I'm not gonna have a good time with them. Now, in proud family fashion, we never saw Carlos ever again. He's never even brought up or mentioned because they made it seem like he could have been a potential love interest for Penny, but that was just for that specific episode. But I liked how they wrapped it all up. They showed the fat phobia. They showed, you heard the fat shaming, especially from La Cienega. And that's one of those episodes when I watched it back then, it made me think about, hmm, the ways I thought about the bigger kids that were in my class at the time. Cause you know, in my class, there were kids that were a little, you know, 
and sometimes you treat them a certain way not to say I but sometimes I saw classmates treat them a certain way make certain jokes about them and all they were doing was just trying to live their life trying to you know go to school eat lunch do this do that live a normal life but because of their physical appearance they got teased and it makes me think about the whole body image discussion that you even see today and the whole fat phobia discussion you see today where even recently have y'all seen that clip where there was like a bigger woman she made a TikTok about how airplanes need to make more seats suitable for fatter people like oh they need accommodations for fatter people like oh don't have the seats be so slim and narrow there's fatter people in the world we need seats that can accommodate us too we shouldn't have to pay extra money just because we're bigger and I had the whole discussion and the whole debate of like oh well if you lose weight you wouldn't have to worry about that and it was a whole big thing it was a discussion this was a debate for like days I remember where do y'all stand with that the whole fat phobic discussion the whole body image discussion and the way that bigger people are seen through the world move through the world the way different things affect them you don't think about it like if you're not in that physical position you wouldn't really know how it feels to have that burden placed on you there's nothing wrong with evaluating yourself physically and seeing oh I want to change this I want to go on a diet I want to change my eating habits and sometimes in some cases most cases if you stick through it it actually works you lose weight you go to the gym you get more fit but then what comes with that is sometimes you see a difference in the way people treat you like I can even experience that throughout my years of life you know high school college even in like now in my 20s when I lose weight you could tell people be like oh you lost weight oh da, 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 da. and you'd be like hmm like you appreciate the compliment but then you'd be like damn how were y'all looking at me before oh you don't need binoculars to see this one check out gordito you know i'm not the only one that feels that way those that gain or lose weight you know periodically and sometimes it's not intentional like la cienega with the fat shaming but sometimes it could be indirectly fat phobic when in reality some people that are bigger they can be vegans they can have the healthiest eating styles but they could be something medically wrong like thyroid issues or different things like that where it's uncontrollable you ever watch episodes of shows like my 600 pound life where you have like these morbidly obese people tell their stories eight out of ten times when they tell their stories it's always starting from childhood and the different things they went through, traumatic experiences, things that made them depressed, where they go to food for comfort. And that's a trauma most people will not understand unless they're in that situation. Okay, let's just try it again! You bunch of bastards! And I feel like within this Proud Family episode, it didn't go that deep, but it was just an overall analysis. And to not think you're better or above somebody just because you see yourself as fit or slimmer and they're bigger than you so it's like oh you have this superior attitude towards them because of their physical appearance what do y'all think of the whole fat phobic fat shaming discussion and conversation and how do y'all feel this episode of the proud family handled that if they kept going in this direction with their storylines and even in this reboot they wouldn't have so much backlash and criticism but you know, that's a whole nother story. That's for them to figure out. So please, let me know your thoughts down below. This should be a really interesting discussion. Because I never really talked about this topic on my channel before. But I felt like this was an episode of The Proud Family that highlighted that issue well. And this was over 20 years ago. So what do you think about this issue now? Please, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.